here and around the world. <coughs> I thought we'd do this one in the daylight. It's still early. I want to set the record straight right off the bat. I told my wife this morning I had an idea of what I wanted to talk about today was the word fear <coughs> and followed by the word doubt. She says, oh, you're going to preach. I said, <laughs> I kind of chuckled and said, I'm not a preacher. I'm not an evangelist. <clears throat> what I am is a mathetes. That is an ancient Greek word for a student or disciple. <clears throat> Since 1998, when I was in a crash and almost died, I wanted to do something that would fulfill a need to help others. So I designed myself a curriculum because I couldn't afford college, but I did graduate high school. So I began to study, watch all the TV evangelists, learn what they were about. And I would do my studies, and I would write, and by the year 2000, I had accumulated quite a stock of writings and studies in depth, and this is what I do. I'm not a preacher. I don't ask for anything from anybody. I won't dress fancy. I don't seek fame. All I want to do is teach and share. So I am a mathetes, a mere student of God's Word. <clears throat> the word fear is interesting. It's a uh, It's a four-letter word that starts with an F. <laughs> but fear, there is so many definitions of it. And now I'm going to tell you exactly where they are in the Bible and the meanings and where you can find them. This all results from a favorite proverb of mine. And you might call this numerology, but it's not. What it is is I relate to a favorite passage. Sometimes I'll use a, a date or a year, and that would tie me to that passage in my Google brain. <clears throat> My favorite one is Proverbs 19, verse 23. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. He that hath it shall abide satisfied. 
he shall not be visited by evil. <coughs> I take this to heart, and that word fear is most important. So I took that word and I chewed on it and got all the way down to the bone. So this is what I found out. In that period of time, back in 2000, there were a lot of decals being circulated. And I would see them on the back windows of cars and vans and everything. It said, no fear. And every time I saw that, something jumped up in my stomach. And said, well, that ain't right. I've got fear. I've got fear of the Lord. This person doesn't have any fear? I feel sorry for them. Anyway, I went on a crusade on my own and I had a 500 decals printed up that said, no doubt. <coughs> so I would, as I was driving around and I would spot one of those that said, no fear, I would do my damnedest to get a hold of that driver. And I would ask them, <coughs> I see your decal says no fear. What does that mean? And about half of them would say, I don't know. I just put it on there. And some of them would say, well, my child gave it to me, so I stuck it on the window. And uh, I guess a lot of the younger ones running around, I got no fear. You know, <clears throat> anyway, I, uh, after I would get done listening to him, I would hand him one of my decals, and I would quote that proverb to him, and explain to him that there are very many meanings for that word, and uh, a lot of them went away going to take that sticker off of their window as soon as they got home. <coughs> My stepdaughter knows this story because I've shared it with her. And uh, she's on kind of a crusade of her own right now. But uh, it's uh, it was quite a journey that lasted for months and uh, I finally ran out of decals I would give packages of 250 to churches and uh, you know it was a uh, it was quite an ordeal but anyway the Bible I use is the King James Authorized Version. It's the only one I'll ever use. <coughs> uh, I'm going to narrate the stories that I've written instead of making it up as I go along. Uh, sometimes I'll do that. Other times, if I've got all the information, I'll, I'll relay it and just narrate it. <coughs> so, with all that being said, we'll get into this word fear. Words and languages are many, 
and received in one's own understanding. This has raised a need to share one of my journeys along my path with you. <clears throat> While driving on a highway one day, many years ago, I noticed a vehicle with a no fear decal in the back window that really upset me for some reason. So I started to search for why it had that kind of effect on me. And lo and behold, I went into a deep study of this word fear as it is used in the King James Bible that I study intensely. <clears throat> First of all, I live by the scripture written in Proverbs 19.23. I've already explained that. The study of the word fear netted the following results. <clears throat> Total use of the word from Genesis to Revelations is 400 times. <clears throat> First used in Genesis chapter 9 verse 2. There are 20 Hebrew meanings in the Old Testament. 10 different meanings in the New Testament in Greek. <coughs> the variables, 73 times as feared Three times as fiercest, twenty times as feareth, eleven times as fearful, one time only as fearfully, three times as fearfulness. Eight times as fearing, four times as fears. There are sixty seven fear not. That's nine variations of the word with thirty total meanings. <clears throat> and notice I did not include the English definition because the orig original languages <coughs> are, the, are where the truth is found. And so the story goes, when I see one of these decals on a vehicle, I would ask the driver, what does it mean? I've explained that. <coughs> This was written on May 3rd, 2010. about all I'm going to elaborate on the word fear. Now we're going to move on to the word doubt that falls into the same subject. Uh, I will tell you ahead of time that God hates doubt. <coughs> I don't know the exact scripture, but if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, 
that's able to move mountains, that's a good one. <coughs> so the word doubt alone is used 13 times in the King James Bible. God hates this word as we study the use of this word in our Heavenly Father's inspired word of truth. In Hebrew, only three times in the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 37, verse 33, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 66, and Job chapter 12, verse 2. The definition, I mean the, the pronunciation is omnom, used with no, meaning having no doubt, indeed, truly, this was what was found in Job only. <coughs> The Greek, ten times used in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 14, verse 31. Distazo, to duplicate, waver in opinion, doubt. <coughs> Matthew chapter 21, verse 21. Diacrino, to separate thoroughly, hesitate. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. The same meaning as Matthew. Luke chapter 11, verse 20. Ara, through the idea of drawing a conclusion. Inference. John chapter 10, verse 24. A hero to lift. Puske breath, spirit, vitality. Soul. Acts chapter 2, verse 12. Diep orejo. <coughs> Thoroughly non pulsed. Be in doubt. Perplexed. Acts. 28, verse 4. Panchos. Entirely. At all events. By all means. <clears throat> First Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 10. Gar, assigning a reason, explanation, used in argument, and as because, etc. Galatians, chapter 4, verse 20. Aporejo, to have no way out, to be at loss, 
mentally. First John chapter two verse nineteen. There was no reference for that definition. <clears throat> and we always thank the Lord Jesus Christ for leading us through His Holy Spirit in these teachings and giving us the wisdom and understanding. <clears throat> that study was done March 23rd, 2000. That's about all I have today. I hope you enjoy these teachings. They're not preachings, they're teachings. want to give a special message to my good friends in the mountains of Virginia. We all stand on the porch sometimes and wonder why are we here especially after something goes really bad. <clears throat> 